guys, welcome to Zara Kelasku with me Zara from Indonesia. So in this video, I want to react to Dr. Kaganate's The First Turkic Empire. So guys, I never heard about Gokturk before. And the Turks empires that I know are Mamluk, Seljuk, and also Ottoman Empire. But actually, there are 16 Turks empires. Wow, mashallah. So I'm so curious about this one, about Gokturk Empire. Alright, let's start to react. They ruled over the largest empire of their day. Although it was relatively short-lived, it would be the first of many great empires, either built or toppled by their many descendants. For centuries to come, from Europe to East Asia, Turkic warriors played an integral role in the balance of power in the imperial courts of Chinese and Roman emperors and the Shah and Shahs of Sasanian Persia. Long before their many centuries of prominence, the first Turkic peoples we know of had humble origins as a small tribe of horse breeders and skilled metal workers, specializing in the production of weapons and armor. Living in the area of the Altai Mountains, they were subjugated into the service of the Roran Khaganate, likely related to the later Mongols. They were led by a Kagan who ruled over a confederation of Khans or tribal chiefs. These early Turks, known as the Turuk or the Fuche, meaning combat helmet in Chinese, were led by the Khan Bumin, who successfully rebelled and overthrew the Roran Khaganate. In alliance with two northern Chinese dynasties and other lesser Khans of the steppe, which he rallied to his cause, 30,000 surviving Ruan families fled to the west, widely believed to have become the Avars. Bumin died shortly after establishing the Gurkturk Khaganate. Gurkturk has been translated as Celestial Turk, Blue Turk, or Sky Turk. The empire continued to expand after his death. The Turkish Khaganate came into contact with the Sasanian Persians and formed an alliance with them against the Haftalites, a generation's long foe of the Persians. Together, they divided their empire. This alliance would not last long, however. As a hostile relationship quickly developed between the two, the Turks sent emissaries to the Eastern Romans, opening diplomatic relations with them with the goal of coordinating campaigns against the Persians. These plans never came to full fruition. By the year 580, the Gurk Turk Khaganate was the dominant military power in the north, from the shores of the Black Sea to the Atlantic Ocean. All neighboring states either became tributaries, vassals, or were subjugated to devastating raids, such as the newly unified Zue dynasty of China, who are overjoyed when the Turkish Khaganate broke down in a civil war. The Sui dynasty effectively encouraged and supported multiple sides in this conflict so that their enemy would self-destruct. The four warring factions eventually split in the eastern and western halves. These two Khaganates enjoyed a short period of resurgence, and the eastern Turks began to raid China and exact tribute once again. The Sui dynasty collapsed and was replaced by the Tang dynasty established by a line descended from capable generals. The Tang hired tens of thousands of Turkish horsemen and many generals, first to guard the frontier from their fellow Turks, and then, in 629 to 630, with overwhelming force, they conquered the eastern steppe. 27 years later, the Tang would conquer the western Turkish Khaganate, and for the only time in history, a native Chinese emperor was also a great Khan of the steppe as well. After an unsuccessful rebellion was crushed by the Tang Chinese, the Ashina clan that had established the first Turkish Khaganate led another rebellion that was successful this time, establishing the second Turkish Khaganate in 682. They vengefully raided China and rapidly expanded westwards, coming into contact with Islam and the Arabs for the first time. And for a short time, it appeared their glory days would return. This period saw a possible alliance with the Tibetan Empire that never was fully realized, and the Orkhan inscriptions erected in modern-day Mongolia, which are the oldest surviving form of Turkish language, to be preserved in writing. This second Turkic Khaganate collapsed soon after its height due to infighting, and was replaced by the Turkic Uyghur Khaganate. The Gurk Turks' greatest legacy would not be their conquest and plunder they accumulated, but their language, culture, and people that spread and multiplied. The Uyghur, Khazar, Karkanids, Ghaznavids, Seljuk, Khwarezmid, and Ottoman Empires 
are only a few of the many empires, kingdoms, and states founded by the descendants of these first Turks. And today, there are over 150 million speakers of a Turkic language in the world. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll also enjoy my video I did on the Mongol Empire, what did the Mongol warrior eat, and why were the Mongols so successful. As there are many similarities to the empire's strategy and organization of the Mongols and these earlier Gurk Turks. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment on what Turk- Wow guys, that is Gok Turk Empire. So guys, before the Ottoman, before Seljuk, before Mamluk, there is Gok Turk. So the Gok Turk Kaganate established by the Ashenek clan of the Gok Turks in medieval Inner Asia. Under the leadership of Bumin Kagan and his brother Istami, the first Turkic Kaganate succeeded Roran Kaganates as the hegemonic power of the Mongolian plateau and rapidly expanded their territories in Central Asia and become the first Central Asian transcontinental empire from Manchuria to the Black Sea. So guys, this Gokturk empire was formed from a combination of some Turkish tribes. The language that Gokturk spoke is all Turkish. And the Gokturk religion is Tengrism. So do you know guys that Turks have their origin in Central Asia, namely Altai Mountains? Do you know guys that the Turkic empires not only Ottoman, Seljuk, Mamluk, but there are 16 Turkish empire. Wow, there are 16 Turkish empire that I never heard before. Alright guys, thanks for watching my video, but don't forget to like, comment, and also subscribe. Okay, see you in the next video.